silence lasts pretty long. It's very important for shutting down enemy hero combos. We'll be seeing a lot of it now. We don't need any more builds since you gave us the blessed pit lord build. <laughs> Maybe I should try that now. My light I gladly obey. Do you think you can open Dreadlord in a serious undead mirror? I mean against DK or Lich? Uh, only on Ternus stand. Only on Ternus stand. BGR. The tavern is very far removed from the enemy base, and the base is in a cubby hole. I feel like Ternus is the best for Dreadlord Fexpo. Like, let's say if I faced Night End on Ternus stand, I would go Dreadlord Expo and actually feel confident. It will be close, and the last times he always beat my Dreadlord strat, but I would actually think. If I can just stop the Goblin Sapper, I have a chance. Yeah, if I win Fiend Mirror against Night End, I'll actually be really proud. He plays this so solid, I always lose pretty bad. But it's fun to try. I'm keen to try. I'm actually thinking I'll go uh, Pit Lord 2nd, maybe. Pit Lord 2nd or Pit Lord 3rd. You have one with against him with un undead mirror fiends on TR. Oh yeah, yeah I think so. But repeating it would be tough. Is this the night end? Didn't he switch to Starcraft too? Yes, he did. So did I, and now we're back. You never forget your first. Is that actually true? I just say it, but I mean obviously. I didn't forget. You could also forget if you uh, get brain brain concussion. I guess. Why don't you go Lich first in Undead Mirror? Yo, honestly, McDurb, Lich first is fine. Depends on the map a bit. I don't like it on Turtle. But it's really a skill uh, decision. Like. I don't like it at all because I suck with Lich first. If I'm gonna go for an intelligence hero first, I wanna have summons. Farseer, Archmage, Keeper, and then I'll do okay. I guess Lich can make skeletons, but I don't know, he feels so vulnerable to me. Yes, and snare him. As you order. 
Get the uh, fourth ghoul and then I'll get slaughter ass. Oh, he's not getting a lot of damage. Cool. I wish what is your hey, Moss Slippers, let's go. I, I think in a year, Pit Lord will be used so frequently. Like, even more than now. He's so insane. It's like, we'll look back at this time and think, why didn't we play him all the time? Like, every race. Cleave, most broken thing ever. Well, I guess we will see, Ganicus. Do I think Pitlord Second is better? Obviously, I'm putting, I'm putting that decision out there now. I'll get Carapace Second, bro. I've got a lot of claws. So much agility. So funny. Oh, he's got so many skeletons, seriously. Is this? Our forces are under attack. 
What is this agility? Seriously, if I can somehow survive, I have a small chance. The DK loss was pretty bad though. If you could just leave me alone for a bit. Nice. This Hitler. For the Lich King. You call. My vengeance is yours. Yeah. Tremble before me. My patience is very dark. My vengeance is yours. At last. Uh, as you are tremble before me, don't ask me what your people do. I still get Lich third. Let's start now. He's so aggressive. Die. 
Does he have a shade or what? Because his uh, map control is always sublime in mirror. And uh, does he have an expo? Because he's got a huge army, so many abominations. Or is it just the result of his fewer unit losses? Does have an expo. Let 
If I had another mana pot. We need cleave upgrade. Where do we get it? Here? Get one of them too.
As the shadow will. My vengeance is you. What does the shadow do? Our forces are under attack. This better be. Going for my main? Gutsy. But he might just be able to do it. Bases everywhere. He's gonna go for my other base. He's got shade after all. Banshees, Necros. Protect this base. Maybe get Necropolis. Where shall my blood And another ghoul for lumber. The restless dead await. Yeah. This better. I am small. What does the shadow do? The restless dead await. My patience has a dead shall sing as you order. What does the shadow do? Necromancer upgrade for cripple. The 
Cripple's good. Yes! <laughs> Cripple and Pitlord! Told you guys! Pitler crazy. Look at this. The wind lord strikes again. <laughs> I'm glad you've drank the demon blood, little orc. <laughs> Look at this. Ah. <sighs> I don't think so, Anta. Just to have the better hero pick sometimes takes a fresh look. Of course, we got pretty nice items too, but... Don't waste my time. Oh, he, he had so many bases as well. The cripple was really key. Uh, undead versus undead at TR Knight and DKPL Lich versus DK Lich DR. Let's watch the replay. But I've noticed that you're getting destroyed early in Undead Mirror, don't you think? Yes, I think you noticed that. Charas. Of course, Pitlord is not an early tier 2 advantage hero, Charas. So you always fall behind with Pitlord and then you come back. Okay, I would love to see any... I, ju I would just love to see anything that I wasn't aware of during the game. Just learning throughout the game. Will you do a challenge with Pitlord like you do with Maev? Maybe like Pitlord's second day can be oh. done with various races. Oh my god, I would have left the game early, but you still managed to turn around. Wow. <laughs> thank you, man. And thank you, Pinke. Welcome to Cleveland. Phil Hotz, Nimant, Chief Froga. Okay, so the creeping speed, I'm a little slower, but that's because I'm on his side of the map. But it gives me the advantage of leaving my own creeps for later. Coiling now was... Look, this coil that I did was uh, designed to s punish an early coil by him. I would be like the second coil. If he does it like right after me, either reactively or... Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to spam a few items, like hope I get the ward or the Pedia. Generally, you can get one of the two and that's still worth it for me. Even if it costs me a coil. Okay, so the tech speed is... I'm slightly faster. Why does the Pitler build do so poorly mid-game? Feels like you just need one good fight with level 2 cleave and it's no Yeah. But there you go, level two cleave. That's not mid game, there Kaiser. That's already late game. Mid game is like second hero level one or two. That's early to mid game, right? Sure, I'd love to get Pitlord level three without being disturbed, but he was not okay with that. <laughs> Welcome back to Jaina in the morning. At, at this point, I knew it was going to be a Mimi game. Here, let me put my face somewhere else. Uh, yeah, right here. Once you get this much agility. So pretty good scouting by him. Um, and then he just pressures. See, this is what I don't get about Night End. Why does he just push with four Fiends? This just messes me up. But like, what if the opponent played exactly like him? But I didn't, right? I did Skeleton Harass. 
He just comes in here and kills my slaughter ass. Yeah, we're just gonna keep creeping, okay? What's the what is the agility most important for with Pitlord? Attack speed? I mean it's both, right? It's attack speed and it's armor. He needs both. If you're gonna be standing there on the front line, you will need both. Okay, so at this point, he's like mass spamming skeletons in my base. Maybe he just made a hard read. Yeah, it's possible. Death by Guava. Just reading that I'm doing something that uh, is going to get punished. He killed a, a Tomb of Relics and a crit. Why not Frost Armor on Lich to protect Pit Lord? Ritual 1 seem not worth. Ritual 1 is always kind of worth and it leads to Ritual 2. You get more mana, therefore more Nova. I didn't expect him to hard focus Pit Lord as much as he did, Bogdanov. And that one fight that we had here, I really wish we took Frost Armor because he kept focusing the Pit Lord and Frost Armor would have done pretty decent. It would have been a straight up 3 armor increase. And Nightend is someone that doesn't play a lot of destroyers ever against Org, against uh, Undead. It feels like when he sees a lot of units that counter destroyers like Archers, Dryads, uh, Cryptvians, Headhunter, Raider, he just doesn't bother with them rather than using them for a little bit, which is interesting. So what I'm trying to say is Frost Armor would have got more value, value than otherwise. Because it can't get dispelled by some destroyer. Ah! You hear the Orb of Corruption on Dark Ranger? Okay, this was an interesting moment. We lost DK, lost TP, Tavern rebought DK, lost Equip Fiend, Unburrowed Falsely. And we lost that fiend as well. So we're looking at 33 effective food against 47 with my crypt dead, tomb of relics dead, slaughterhouse out of commission, no mana on DK and level 33 and it's 3.811. Now here's the thing, second hero for me is a little higher because I've been creeping it under heavy duress and his going for a dust puts a temporary damper on his creeping speed. So we're getting a level 7 turtle out of this, which uh, wasn't easy. Definitely desperation. Now, had he been a stream cheater, which of course he's not, but had he been, he would have known I would be here without effort. That's what makes a lot of these stream cheat games less interesting, because the genuine comebacks that I often have had, uh, they just wouldn't be possible. But this time I got away with this because he's not 100% sure where I am. He gets a good camp so he's satisfied anyway. And then he pressures. Just in time for us. She drives me wild. Gil Blurenko the Sin. Thank you for the subs. So we're 42 food against 50. He has one attack upgrade. Uh, funnily enough, How of Terror also takes into account upgrades. So... Is that, is that actually a thing for uh, for Aras as well? I think so. You're the best streamer and so friendly. Sad I found you just one week ago. Well, happy you're here, Misha, Mishan Yazar. Thank you. Are you ever worried that you adapt to a way of playing that takes into account that the opponent might be watching? Well, for some people I know that they always stream cheat, and for some people I just don't think about it. But it's the, it's really, f like for the most part it's really fine, because you just train your fundamentals more. Uh, it means that you can't get away with like things that you normally wouldn't be able to get away with if they know, right? So y you are forced to play better at every level except deception. And deception is one of my stronger points, which is why it's a pity uh, when people do uh, stream cheat, but 
ultimately that kind of trickery if you're wrong you lose so that's not good you want to have control of your own fate and there's ways to play where you have more control over your own fate play less risky Uh, I saw that just now Howl did minus 8. Now with his upgrade it does minus 9. Summer. At this point Pitlord is starting to become pretty funny. Why don't you just call it stream sniping? Because stream cheating is way more uh, clear term. Stream sniping, a lot of people think stream sniping is stream cheating, or they think stream sniping is just meeting someone. Q sniping. When you speak of stream sniping, it's the most ambiguous term there is. But if you say stream cheating or Q sniping, you have successfully segregated the two terms into opposite meanings, different meanings, not opposite. Understand? Untapped potential. Do you think Pitlord second would work versus Orc two? Hell yeah! I do it against the Orc all the time. It's really good. Yeah, honestly, Hearthstone ruined the term sniping. So he's 58 foot and he's expanding behind it. Okay, that's how he did it. So he went double slaughterhouse. Isn't that interesting? He went for mass abominations. That's his, at least in this game, theoretical answer against Pitlord. Uh, many of you know that I am 100% okay with Q sniping in Warcraft 3. I would never accidentally incriminate someone's morals by saying that they are a stream sniper when they're simply Q sniping. I'm happy when people Q snipe, it's cool, it's like a challenge, a glove in the face. If I say, hey, this is a stream sniper, some people may misunderstand that I call them a cheater and I'm like disparaging their reputation in public, that wouldn't be very good. So I'm gonna make a very clear distinction for known stream cheaters and just happy snipers. Happy stream snipers. Q snipers. Q sniping means that you're sniping waiting for the Q. So you're waiting till the opponent, the streamer queues, and then you queue, so you meet. And then you turn off the stream because you want a fair match. So at this point, I figured not a lot of value in trying to fight him here anymore. He had a really big army. Look at that. That's crazy. He's got. 70 food and the funny part is he's only mined 120 here but he's invested like 700 so all the food that he has now uh, 70 food is 100 percent from his creeping lack of unit losses and nothing to do with his expansion and his upgrades are 2-0 so if you think that the losses we had with the DK, the TP, and so on and so on, that they didn't amount to enough of a deficit, you'd be wrong. This is super over in terms of food. And the only thing that we have in return is a second hero that's level three, and his second hero is level two. And to be fair, we've got better items. So he prioritized the turtle seven, which gave him Scroll of the Beast, Greater Invulnerability. And we prioritize some of the Ogre Warrior camps and others. And uh, obviously we took his parry up to Vitality from the Goblin Shop, but we also got Claws, Claws, Slippers, Slippers, Crown, well, Helm of Valor, and then more Slippers and a bunch of rings. It was pretty crazy. So our heroes are better. But it took a lot of damage to make it here to Pitlord. Like he's played not only is he playing more meta, but he's also played so aggressive with good micro and really good game sense. He only didn't guess where I was twice. That did cost him a bit. Had he guessed, could have been over. I think at this point I run, right? I think he could have done less Pitlord focus though. If he went for Crit Fiend one by one with Dust, that would be a really reliable way to win the game, I think. 
He's 78 food against 45. He's got double my army size. Not counting workers, roughly double my army size. Really, he should have been focusing more Fiends, I think. Shouldn't air or casters be the answer against Bitlord's Cleave? It seems impossible not to have any losses with Bitlord Second in mid game, though. Yeah, probably you should not be able to survive with Bitlord Second. Um, I wouldn't recommend Necros, but Banshees are possible. Curse on Pitlord could be good, which would require me to go for Destroyer to remove Curse, but then he could web and kill the Destroyers. I can't keep up that trade. Our forces are under attack. He's now 78 food, getting his third attack upgrade. It's actually bonkers how not die I did. So not die. With my Pitlord. Just because he has eight armor? No, nine. Nine armor. How not die I did is crazy. Here, let's change the colors. Uh, night and blue, we red. It's clearer in fights. Seventy-four food against fifty. 47, 78, 3 0 attack. We have 1 0. 50 food versus 80. Man, what a meme. I'm trying to imagine that I would lose Orc Mirror to some uh, off race scrub. And I'm 80 food versus 50. I'm trying to imagine what world an Orc can get so much value. It has to be Pitlord as well. Like Pitlord with Bloodlust and Torrents or something. <laughs> but like, how many Torrents fit in a 50 food army? Let's say, um, who's the equivalent of me for another race? I don't know. Let's say, yeah, let's say Night End plays against me. He's Orc and he's like, I'm gonna play Bloodlust and Torrents and Pitlord. And I'll be like, yeah. Three base versus one. 80 food versus 50. Our forces are under attack. And he kills units every fight. 47 against 86. <laughs> 47, 86. Now getting an armor upgrade on abominations. He already has an attack upgrade. He did forget four Kripvians. Considering they have three attack upgrades, that's a pretty significant omission. This fight was hilarious. His statues are dying to my Abom. They are three slots away. <laughs> it basically it started turning around the second we got uh, Frenzy. And like I said previous game, abominations suck. <laughs> Dark Ranger died! I never laid a hand on her, I promise. It's Pitlord. He knows not what he does. This is just beautiful. Oh my eyes. Oh. Bloodlusted Torrens with Pit Lord. Go for it. <laughs> oh man. Now all we need to do is to meet Lin and beat him with it. 50 versus 80 food. Rizora. <laughs> it's a good request. Thank you. You know you want to. Yeah. We're 36 food versus 65. Our forces are under attack. And this Kripfian backstabbed his statue. Secret burrow tactics. Oh no, no. No! Very cool. At this point, it was run fiesta for him. He realized he could not stand against Mungrathod. 
10 armor. With frost armor, he would have had 13 armor. 13 armor? TC and Pitlord? Well, no, it would have to be Shadow into Pitlord because uh, you need a healer. Like, I'm coiling Pitlord here, right? Shadow into Pitlord, Bloodlust, Torrent. Oh, yeah, he absolutely could have won the game after we lost DK to Nova Snipe and rebought it. Obviously, I'd like to replay this game where that doesn't happen. How come Master Neckers were so late? I would have thought they were a huge draw of tier 3, especially versus no Destros. I'm trying not to rush them out too much. I find that if I'm like totally specializing in Master Necros, I'm like uh, showing my cripple too soon. And then because of that, I may be lacking out on other things like Orb of Corruption or enough unit count or expansion. I think it was perfect now. It could have come a little bit earlier, but I feel like it did come out at a good time. If I get them too early, he will just get destroyers and they will, they will, cripple will become a near non-issue. If you're going cripple, you must also go web, right? Because of the destroyer necromancer counter. And now suddenly we're pretty even on food, 63, 69. So at this point we just straight up nearly have the same army and we have the better uh yeah heroes yeah he made too many abominations i guess he figured like he could do anything with the lead he has i think he got overconfident i'm v i'm fully aware that we didn't win this game as much as that he lost it you have to make that distinction because if you won it, you can repeat, but if he lost it, then maybe it's not like very reliable. So you have to be realistic there. Nonetheless, it's hilarious how big of an advantage uh, he had. Yeah, he left uh, two tomes for me, right? Agility and strength, it's a pretty big deal. I mean, Pitlord's pretty boosted regardless. 13 armor with frost armor could have had 16 right now there's 40 percent damage reduction i think we did good movement at this phase in the game not committing everything to the expansion was good oh my god he's going necros as well he's actually getting master training and necromancer adapt training before a single necros on the field he knew he had to match the power of the necromancer Pitlord did get buffed, 5 to 10% per cleave level or so. He definitely didn't need to research Skeleton Mastery, which is a 200 gold upgrade. Not like we're raising the dead here, come on. Let's watch the glory of the final fight. Cripple. Our hero has been Wouldn't Pitlord work well with human army too? Priest heal and inner fire. Uh, I guess priest heal is no death coil. Death coil heals four to 600, which is better than the uh, priests that do like, what? 25 at a time. 